This video is brought to you today by Ghost Tags. This is my own company that I started because I wanted a glow in the dark air tag case. These things are awesome. You can stick them on your backpack, on your dog's collar, and you will be able to find it at night. We've got two colors, blue and green. They've got great reviews. Go check them out. Links to them down below. Now on to the video. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, we're going to talk about iOS 17.4 beta 1, which is the current developer beta. As you can see right here, this is the build number ending with an I. So we still have a long ways to go. And let me preface this video by saying, if you're not a developer, I wouldn't get this one. In fact, even if you are a developer, probably shouldn't put this on your main device. And the reason being is this actually does heat up my phone a decent amount. There's something in this version that is affecting battery and heat, but I'm gonna talk about that here at the end. Let's first just go over the new features because I know that's what you guys really wanna hear about, especially for those of you that aren't going to install this, which again, I recommend skipping this one. Maybe wait for the next beta of this one and we'll see if it fixes. So just stay tuned to the channel because I'm gonna let you guys know. Also follow us on Twitter because we actually warned people about the heat yesterday. So make sure you're following us there. There's a link down below. Anyways, let's talk about changes. First off, there are some EU changes. So if you live in the EU, your phone will have more changes than someone in the US like myself. Apparently in the EU, you are going to be able to use separate app stores almost. So you will be able to install other apps that aren't on the app store. However, preliminary reports are saying that this is going to be very locked down in an Apple fashion, kind of like the app store. Right now, if you submit an app, it has to go through a rigorous testing to make sure it's legit, not a virus, stuff like that. There's going to be something similar coming to the EU where you can kind of sideload apps, but it's it's not fully sideloading. People people thought that they could like download cracked apps and stuff. That's not how this is going to work. In fact, some developers will have to actually pay fees from what I hear based on the number of downloads. I believe in the EU, you will also have an option to choose a third-party browser as a default, and there are some changes to NFC access. Next up, Apple actually changed the terms. They are now allowing streaming game apps. So like Xbox Cloud Gaming, Nvidia GeForce Now, those can be standalone apps that you can download and actually use now. So that's really cool that they are opening that up. I also heard that Fortnite is coming back in the EU. I don't know if that's true or not. If anyone actually still plays that game, there you go. There's some new emoji I'll pop up on the screen here. Podcast actually ha now has transcripts on some podcasts, which is kind of cool. So you can read along. All right, guys, the next change is pretty subtle. In the bottom of your Safari, you will see that this URL bar right here is a little bit wider and it actually fills it out a little better. I like it, it's easier to tap and it just looks good. I think it fits the aesthetic of iOS a little bit better. Next up, this is a big one. It probably should be number one on the list, but if you go into settings, scroll down to face ID and passcode, enter your passcode, you will then see a new section for stolen device protection. It's not just a toggle anymore, it's an actual section. And when you click on that, you can now choose how you want this to behave. So before, if you were at a familiar location, you would not have to wait the one hour to make changes on your account. But now they have actually changed it so you can set it to always. So it will always prompt you to wait one hour. Even if you're at a familiar location, you'll still have to wait. Now this was kind of brought up by other users because what if you go to the gym every day or if you're an alcoholic and you go to the bar every day or something? That could be considered a familiar location and that's an easy spot for your phone to get stolen at the gym, bars, nightclubs, anywhere that you go often that might not be your work or your home. Significant locations might still consider a familiar location and just like that, uh, there is no timeout. So Apple recognized this and quickly implemented this right here. So you can change this to always. It will always request that one hour lockout to make changes. So me personally, I'm switching it to always because it says right here, a delay will always be required to change security settings. I think that's probably the best move at this point. So those are the biggest features within iOS 17.4 developer beta one. Now let's talk about performance, battery, all that stuff. So those are the features. Yes, there are some pretty good ones in here but I don't think it outweighs the battery issues and the heat issues. So immediately after installing, my phone was really hot. My phone actually stayed warm for a while. I'm gonna head into battery here just to show you guys. It doesn't actually look that bad uh, on the thing here because I was actually using this quite a bit during this time. Although it does look like messages is kind of using a lot and it's just random apps seem to be using a lot of battery that I wouldn't expect. But then when you look at the usage graph, it actually doesn't look so bad. So it's, it's all over the place, guys. I, personally, it feels like the battery life is less than it normally is, at least right now. Not much, maybe like two to 5% worse. Not a whole lot, but it is something. On top of that, the phone warmth, it, it is a thing. So it's getting a little better now. So I don't know if it's caching in the background or removing old files or what, but I left it plugged in overnight last night and still today, I still had some heat. Now, right this second, it actually isn't so bad. It's cooled off a bit. So maybe it just took 24 hours. I don't know. I'm going to keep you guys in the loop. I'll let you guys know what I find. But as of right now, I don't recommend it because of the heat and the battery. On top of that, 
I've also been having some glitches. So if you guys watch those other big YouTubers, they put out the video right away. They don't actually test the operating system really. They just, you know, read through some features and that's it. I've actually been using this for 24 hours. So this is my follow-up and actual early review of this iOS version and there are glitches. So if you get a notification and you click on that notification, almost no matter what app it is, if it's the first time you're opening that app since installing, it's going to crash. So I got a YouTube notification I wanted to reply to. I click on it, it crashes, nothing opens. I have to manually open it. Flight radar gives me a plane alert. I click on it, it crashes. These crashes are not normal. On pretty much any iOS 16 through 17 so far, even the betas, I haven't had crashing like this. It's crashing on this phone. I've rebooted this phone many times, I think three or four times since yesterday, just because I like to test things and make sure that it's not something on my side. So there's definitely issues with this beta, very minor issues. Crashing's only for notifications so far. Maybe I've had one app crash otherwise, but it's still an annoyance and average users shouldn't be dealing with this. So if you're not a developer, don't get this yet. And definitely don't put this on your daily driver just yet if you're not ready for worse battery, heat, and a little bit of crashing every now and then. Some people have reported that animations seem sped up. I personally think that they seem pretty normal. I don't notice anything too new. It could just be a placebo effect, I'm not sure. Things do feel snappy, I will say that, but the crashing kind of hinders that, you know? It's like, oh yeah, it's so quick to tap on that notification and open up and then it crashes, so it's not really quicker at all. Anyways, that's all I got for this video, guys. If you liked it, hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe. I'm going to have some follow-ups coming because this is such a big update. I think it deserves some coverage. I think you guys want to know if this is actually worth installing. Like I said, I don't recommend this beta, but we'll see with beta 2 either next week or the week after, probably next week, uh, and I'll let you guys know if that one's more stable. Thumbs up, subscribe. Peace.